Joining me on episode three of Impact Catalyst is the CEO of our St. Petersburg YMCA, Mr. David Jezik. It's always good to see you, sir. Welcome. Same here, Joe. Good to see you, too. So uh, I think last time we we hung out was at a golf tournament. That was uh, a few months back, the days yeah. that we may fairly remember now. <laughs> yeah. Oh, how things have changed yes. uh, in just short order. Um you know, particularly here at the Y, and um, I was reflecting back uh, in early March, some of the conversations we were having about projects and things that were happening for us, and uh, many of which have just kind of been pushed off to the side, and, you know, we had to really pivot um, uh, what we're doing. Obviously, the, the locations are closed. A lot of the child care has been disrupted. What what services have you been able to keep, keep up? Well, um, you know, early in, in March, in conversations with my colleagues, uh, uh, Scott Goyer at the YMCA of the Sun Coast and Matt Mitchell, CEO of the Tampa Metropolitan Area YMCA, we recognized that, um, you know, there was, there was a little bit of, of conversations about wise closing and the need to have those fitness facilities closed. And uh, so we, you know, we, we, uh, we have a great partnership and relationship. So we, started having a conversation because if any one of us closed, uh, there would be more pressure for the other to close mm-hmm. in, in the, in the region. So, uh, we made a decision to close, uh, and announce our closing on March 17th. And in addition to that announcement of closing all of our Y facilities, uh, we, uh, announced the launching of the youth care, uh, for, uh, essential workers. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, yeah, we we had originally 24 sites, uh, so we really basically uh, converted our wellness facilities, our membership facilities, to to house childcare for our frontline uh, personnel. Now that and that would have been a, from a staffing standpoint. Were you were you in a place where you already had the people in place to do that much childcare? Well, you know, we're the YMCA nationally is the largest childcare provider. And, and regionally, if you consider the wise, we're, we're, we're the largest child care provider, school age. Um, and and we, we have staff. Obviously, we have in-school programs. And, and then we have programs that are within the wise or other facilities around the community. So uh, we have the staffing and the expertise. So it just made sense. Uh, schools were closed. Um, you know, we typically operate our before and after school or summer camp or spring bake camps in the schools, but with schools closing, um, and not having access to that, we had to repurpose our facilities, uh, which made sense, uh, particularly given the parameters of how you have to have a one to nine ratio and you need to make sure all the kids are in one room and they can't be mixed and, when you move them from one room to the other, you got to clean after you leave. And right. I mean, it's very complex. I mean, you just can't put them all in a gym and say, you know, have fun. Right. Uh, it's, it's pretty uh, complex. So, so these are guidelines then for, uh, you know, mitigating the risk for get contracting the virus. So keeping the popul- the groups separated at all times. Um, and then what about within the rooms? Uh, what, what, what did you have to do within the room? We, we try hard to keep that six foot barrier, but kids are kids, right? So uh, we do a lot of hand washing, <laughs> um, basically on the hour. And then anytime there's an activity, which uh, they're sharing a ball or something of that nature, we make sure there's another hand washing. But um, we're currently operating in 21 sites uh, across Tampa Bay. Um, here in St. Pete, we have three locations. So our Jim and Heather Gills YMCA, our Bardmore YMCA, and our Wellman Exchange, we have a, a child care center there. Our preschool centers have been, uh, continue to be open, and they're at about 50% uh, capacity uh, and mostly filled with essential personnel. I mean, most most people that are having to work from home are keeping their children home. But, right. uh, you know, so the age break, bracket that we're um, – we're providing is age two all the way up to age 12. Um, and we do have some, we have some preschoolers. Um, so when you say 50% capacity, then does that mean that if there are, uh, you know, first responders or other people in that category, there's still maybe availability for the child care? Absolutely. Okay. I would tell you when we started doing the math of the 24, the, the 24 sites now down to 21, because we, right 
we've we've had we had we've done some conversion and, and combined uh, locations. You know, we said, well, we can serve 2,400 children mm-hmm. at all those locations. We hope we won't have to. Right. Um, you know, we we went from about 70 the first week uh, to 158 this week. Um, I was pressed by a reporter, Fox News was out there, and she was asking me at the time. This is like day two, and we had like 18 kids at the time. And she said, well, how many, how many do you have? And I, I said, listen, it's less about how many we have. It's the fact that we are preparing for the worst case scenario where right. our hospitals and our medical personnel and first responders are overwhelmed and we need to be, we need to be ready and up. And basically we closed Y on Tuesday, on Tuesday and we opened this camp up on Monday. So it was a pretty quick turnaround. So, so, you know, what qualifies someone to be eligible for this, assuming either they're listening or someone who knows them may be listening? What, what are the eligible, eligible well, we've, requirements? Right. Well, we've been working um, with all the hospitals in the okay. region. We've had, we've shared that information with them about our program. Um, we've um, fire police. Um, you know, we have, I, I, someone told me we have 53 different categories of essential personnel that their kids are in our program. And I, I have to look at that list because I didn't know there were 53, but it's probably broken into subcategories of right. certain things. I mean, you know, we have a Publix uh, worker, you know, it's important that, you know, people have childcare that have to work in our grocery store. So sure. uh, there's those types of, of situations. So the cost originally was 125 a week. And uh, we received a very generous uh, gift from Florida Blue uh, for a hundred thousand dollars that is going to be spread out between all the, the, the sites, um, uh, and supporting of our program. And then we've had members that have stayed with us through this period of time. So we closed our facilities. So members don't have access. Right. And we've actually, ironically, yesterday, somebody joined our Y <laughs> and we're closed because yeah. they saw what we were doing and they want to support us in that way. And, and we're very fortunate. Our number of our members are electing to continue to pay us. And, and, um, you know, it's, it's a trying time for some families that can't afford to do that. Right. Uh, we've had a number of families that have canceled, but some have also put their membership on hold. Right. Uh, but we've been very surprised, uh, uh, by the response mm-hmm. of our members. Well, I think that speaks to the, the quality of the brand that you've built. You know, it's more than just using the facilities. Of course, it's, it's a, it's got layers of win in it, which is, you know, you get the great facilities, but you're also doing good work in the community. And, you know, I think that uh, just not being able to work out for a little while, the value is still there for them to keep paying that membership. And I think that's right. Really well, we've, we've had over 800 sign up for our less meals, uh, virtual option, um, We've by the end of this week, we'll have called over 200 of our senior members that are we know are isolated. That's important. This is a relationship that we have. Um, we have just over 100 enrolled in our dance academy that we're doing this virtual uh, prep for our Bravo uh, performance later this year. So our dancers uh, in our program are connecting with our instructors. I mean, it's 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 interesting how this is all kind of evolved. I'm. I'm yeah. we're, we're curious as it, it, it may continue even after we open. I think it will. I think it will. <laughs> I think people are learning a lot of cool new ways to do things. And I, I think a lot of them will stick around even when they don't have to, because they're great. Absolutely. They're convenient. Yeah. So, you know, you're, you're at the, you know, you're at the top of, you know, you got a corporation, obviously you've got your corporate family, lots of workers in a lot of places, a lot of people who make the why part of their daily life, a lot of people who rely on the programs. So how are you, uh, you know, what's been your philosophy in leading them and, and what, what energy are you putting out there uh, to, to, you know, to be there, I guess? Well, it, it's been a tough uh, week. Um, in fact, these last two weeks have been the longest two years of my 37-year career. Uh, we've had to make some really difficult choices and mm-hmm. personnel. Uh, we furloughed uh, 456 employees, uh, uh, basically 82% of our uh, employment base. So prior to all this, we had 560 employees, a lot of part-time uh, staff, but it's been really tough. Um, but the ones that have remained uh, are staying, you know, staying on top of things. Uh, our leadership team took a salary pay cut. We've, um, 
you know, this we we basically with the closure of our facilities, we've we've lost sixty um, uh, percent of our revenue uh, or more. Uh, certainly, um, um, you know, the, the longer we're closed and not able to provide uh, our 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 programs, uh, but also be in the schools and care for our children, whether it be before and after school or camps, right. uh, it's it's pretty devastating for us. Yeah. That's understandable. It's really, that's, that's a tough, it's a tough situation. And, uh, you know, we can see some of the programs coming out. We can see the community stepping up, you know, sounds like Florida blue really stepped up. That was great. Um, and, uh, you know, it's going to be a, a clawback, but I, I feel confident that the YMCA has, uh, has persevered for, through worse than this. And, uh, right. well, yeah. <laughs> well, you know, we turned a hundred May 1st yes. in St. Pete, our Y, and we've yeah. lived through a lot. Uh, and, and I think the why will recover. I expect us to be stronger uh, as a result of this. Uh, it's kind of difficult right now to see uh, what that might look like or how long it might take for recovery. Right. Um, certainly, uh, we're doing everything possible. Uh, we're pursuing uh, some of the um, uh, government subsidy and, and the, uh, the CARES Act. Uh, we're on top of that. Um, it's it's been and, and and our national office has really stepped up too in helping local wise across the country uh, by uh, waiving some of the national dues. Um, so it's it's encouraging to see um, our partners step up and support us. Um, we're we're getting contributions also from our members. You know when yeah. they call to uh, maybe put their membership on hold and you talk them up to them about what you're doing. And then you get a check for a thousand dollars. It's really encouraging. Sure. Uh, you know, I know I told you about someone joining us. Uh, we actually had someone that had their membership on hold for like five months. And so they, and they saw what we were doing. They called and took their membership off hold so they could start paying us. Uh, and so, you know, that to me, that's really encouraging. And for our staff and those that are, you know, working these frontline jobs and we put a lot of staff, um, with these children, as you can imagine, the ratio being one to nine, but you also have to have people staff to clean and do the other stuff that's happening. So it's not a very cost effective way of running a camp. Um, but because of the support of our members in Florida Blue, we were able to reduce that fee from 125 down to 50. Okay. So ten dollars a day is a pretty good deal. I'm bad. I'm bad. So I guess the moral of the story is if you're going to join a gym and not use it, which so many people do. Join the Y now and not use it because <laughs> some good stuff coming out the other end of that. Yeah, we actually, it's funny you say that after I heard that someone had joined us. So, well, maybe it's time to do a membership campaign. <laughs> yeah. Because, <laughs> you know, it takes warm up. You got to join, think about it for a couple of months, you know, right. consider what exercises you want to do, do the research, and two, three months down the road, maybe, you know, you poke your head in. You know, it's, that's always been yeah. my MO. So you know, I told I told our staff team the other day we were having a, one of these Zoom meetings, and I said, you know, um, we're very fortunate the, that you know we've actually done a really good job of communicating to our members what the Y does and in supporting our community outside of them just coming in and using a treadmill. You know, they're a part of a family, and um, the fact that we uh, you know include them as a part of that, we had a we had a, a spinorama not but a week or so before all this kind of started blowing up where we right. had members riding on bikes to support cancer survivors in our live strong program. Mm. Uh, so, you know, it's, it's just, uh, it's, it's great to see that, that, um, that response for our members and, um, you know, that know that we're, we've been here a hundred years. We plan on being here another hundred. That's great. Wonderful. Well, I appreciate you coming on. Uh, I doubt we'll get to hang out at the golf tournament this year, but, uh, Pencil me in for next year and if not sooner and uh, keep on keeping on and, uh, you know, we'll uh, keep supporting you and the Y in any way we can. Thanks, Joe. Thank you.